Welcome to the Jam Pack Report today for June the 12th of 2023. My name is Samuel Adams, and on today's show, you know we're breaking down the Xbox Showcase and the Starfield Direct because we got a lot of news on games we knew existed, brand new games we did not even know were a thing, but across the board, we saw some great games. Fundamentally, good stuff. Great content. However you want to break it down, this one brought the heat. And we're going to bring the heat again on today's show. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into a breakdown of everything shown off during the Xbox Showcase and the Starfield Direct. Before we dive into the meat of today's show, I did want to say I experienced this year's showcase in a bit of a different way. I was a part of the Xbox Fan Fest viewing here in Charlotte, and so this was a free event put on by the team at Xbox in collaboration with Regal Theaters and Fathom Events, and you go in, grab a free $10 snack voucher, I got a Diet Pepsi the size of my head, and I gotta say, I've got a pretty massive head. That was a big drink. And then you take a picture in front of the little marquee. Of course, I had to take advantage of that. Uh, and you go in and you watch the showcase and the direct with a crowd of Xbox fans. And it was a very cool experience because you saw the reaction in real time to some of what was shown off. Fable, little pop from the crowd. Some Persona announcements, big pop from the crowd. Uh, you get the Starfield direct. You hear side conversations about how cool this is, what guns somebody wants to use. It was just a very interactive experience. And it was neat to see the Xbox community come out to support that kind of thing. So I was very thankful to be a part of that and something that I would definitely recommend you do if you have the chance to do it in your local area. Of course, there were some trade-offs. You can't see the full resolution of the trailers. You can't see the full frame rate of the trailers that are being shown off, but you also get to watch 30 foot Todd Howard talk to you about the development of Starfield and how excited they are to get it in your hands. You see Phil Spencer and Sarah Bond on the big screen talking about Xbox and the Xbox game studios that are working behind the scenes to bring really neat experiences. That was something that was just cool to me. And so looking back, I'm always going to have the memory of going and watching this showcase at a theater, seeing it on the big screen. And so big thanks to the team at Xbox for making that happen in cities across the country. It was cool just to connect with the people in the community and see the excitement in real time and kind of experience that where I'm not watching a Twitch chat react. I'm not watching the YouTube comments that are negative across the board for something that I might have been excited about. I'm just living the dream. I'm just in the moment. And I think that's something that we can all use a little bit more of. So on today's show, we're going to be digging into the Xbox Game Showcase and Starfield Direct recap that they've got over on the Xbox Wire now, and it shows every announcement and reveal. It's a great way to break down the announcements without having to go through and watch the show through and through once again. Now, if you do want to do that, they've got it linked right here at the top. It runs for about an hour and 52 minutes if you do want to get back into it. And of course, you can find the segmented trailers and things that are cut out over on YouTube from the individual publishers and developers. But they say during the Xbox Game Show, case we shared 27 games 21 of which will be available for xbox game pass and or pc game pass after that starfield direct shot for the stars to offer you unprecedented access to bethesda game studios first new universe in over 25 years but getting into it from start to finish avowed launches in 2024 coming to xbox series xs windows pc steam and cloud Set in the world of Eora, a location known to fans of the Pillars of Eternity series, Obsidian Entertainment's Avowed will see players embark on a journey through the Living Lands, a plagued foreign island full of mysteries and secrets, danger and adventure, choices and consequences. It's a land that feels foreign, yet somewhat intrinsic to you, a place calling out for your help. In this first-person fantasy RPG, players will explore diverse ecosystems and meet companions along the way while uncovering the darkness plaguing these lands. Avowed blew me away. And of course, they did not start off the show with this. They started off with Fable, which we'll get into more in a moment. But this is one that I think could very well hold its own weight. This is one of the biggest games that has my attention from the Xbox Game Studios family. I love the look of the combat. I love the look of the land that you're exploring. I love the vibrancy of the world. Uh, there are so many elements of this that really do speak to me. And so looking to Obsidian, you know, coming off of a game like Grounded and looking forward to games like The Outer Worlds and The Outer Worlds 2, they've got the juice to make this game really pop. I mean, we're talking about the team behind Fallout New Vegas. They know how to make a good Bethesda-esque game. And I think that 
looking to Obsidian Entertainment for this kind of experience where it is going to be the big high fantasy RPG, you're going to have something that's going to be able to bridge that gap between now and Elder Scrolls 6 very well. I could see this game being a big new IP for Xbox if the story is able to deliver. I think that's the most important thing. How are the characters? How is the dialogue? Of course, gameplay is something that's very important. And looking at it, uh, you can tell that it's pretty much going to be that kind of Bethesda-esque RPG like we all would expect it to be. You see the hacking and slash, and you see a couple of guns shown off here and there. Lots of magic uh, in this trailer, which I think is pretty cool. But you forge your destiny in the world of Avowed. I'm very, very happy that we got to see this one at the showcase because had this not been gameplay, I would have been a little bit more concerned. Uh, now, the release time frame of 2024 doesn't really concern me that much. I'm one of the fans that says, take all the time you need because we have plenty of games to play. I've got a backlog that's three miles deep, uh, so I've got plenty to play throughout the rest of 2023. Not to mention, uh, Starfield is absolutely going to take over the world and plenty of other big third-party games are on the way. Uh, so Avowed coming in 2024, Xbox Game Pass, Series XS, and on PC. Great addition to the lineup there. In Exile Entertainment announces Clockwork Revolution. I saw this game and immediately thought, oh my god, it looks like Bioshock Infinite. And I think that's what a lot of people also thought. That's one of the sentiments that I saw along the way. Uh, but this is one that is coming day one on Xbox Game Pass and PC Game Pass. And they write, the creators of Wasteland and Arcanum are bringing an incredible time-bending steampunk action RPG to Xbox Series X, S, and PC. After stumbling across an incredible invention that allows you to travel into the past, you discover the city you call home. The vibrant steam-powered metropolis of Avalon has been carefully crafted through the alteration of key historical events. By traveling back in time, your interactions and choices in the past will have a butterfly effect on the deep narrative-driven world and characters of Avalon, causing them to change and react in unprecedented ways. I thought this was one of the surprise standouts of the showcase because it was something that was entirely new. It's something that has a fresh look to it. Really interesting concept. Kind of reminds me a bit of Singularity, an FPS that came out back in the day on, I think, the 360 and the PlayStation 3, if I remember correctly. But time is a tool that you'll use in the game. And of course, it's a narrative tool uh, that guides the story along. You change something in the story that affects the future, or I should say you change something in the past that affects the present story that you're working through. And you have to kind of manipulate things to, I guess, work your way through this narrative. We don't have too many details on what exactly this game is going to be right now uh, from a narrative point of view. But it has incredibly interesting set pieces. I like the abilities that are shown off. The gunplay looks pretty solid. And so for something like this, it speaks to me because it is new. It is fresh. And I want to see how time is used as a weapon. You see right here, you're reversing, uh, breaking, and building a bridge that an enemy might have been standing on. And so can you use that time manipulation on enemies where like in singularity you can age them until they die and use it in that way or is this something that's just again a narrative piece that kind of moves the story along so cool look i want to learn more about it and of course in exile said it's coming in due time a play on words of course the whole game is centered around the concept of time so clockwork revolution coming day one to game pass and pc game pass on xbox series x s and pc I'm cool for them to take as long as they need on that one. No problem with that whatsoever. Uh, but it was cool to see, again, a look at what's coming in the distant future. This could potentially be a 2024, probably 2025 game. You know, if we're thinking about coming in due time, if other games are labeling 2024 on their trailers, you can probably expect this one is going to be well beyond that, maybe even into 2025, 2026, uh, potentially. Fable, a new beginning for the Legendary franchise. This is how they started off the show. And if you weren't watching live, uh, this comedy really shone through, I think. That was the biggest standout for me, is that there was a big comedic event that they wanted to start off the show with. It's not showing off gameplay, really. Of course, what you see in the trailer itself is actually gameplay. This is captured on an Xbox Series X. They have confirmed that via Twitter. The question is, to what does this speak to? Is this actually what the gameplay is going to look like? I would imagine not. Uh, but the entire trailer is kind of this Jack and the Beanstalk fable uh, where you have the main character, Dave, who's kind of talking through uh, being a vegetable expert, I suppose. He's somebody who is, of course, 
portraying Jack and the Beanstalk. That's what they're getting towards. And so the official write-up says, Playground Games presented Fable, its upcoming open-world action RPG, and new beginning for the legendary and much-loved franchise. Welcome to Albion, the home of heroes and where Fable takes place. It's in this immersive fairy tale land of adventure that myriad challenges, treasures, and stories await. And so seeing the writing, seeing the characters, of course, this is the main actor in the IT crowd or one of the main actors in the IT crowd, uh, seeing how they are bringing all of these elements together and capturing the comedy that made Fable such a special franchise for people back in the day, I think is what people wanted to see from this. Now, again, big criticism here. We still haven't seen real legitimate gameplay. Like, give me a bit of a demo here. And we could see more of this uh, during the Xbox Showcase Extended. I think they talk more about that down at the bottom. I'm just going to scroll down and see if they do, in fact, plan to talk about that later on this week on the show on Tuesday because they have the Extended Showcase where they're going to show more. I scrolled down and confirmed there is no additional content planned for the Xbox Game Showcase Extended that they have detailed in this blog. Something could still be on the way that they might have left out, but I would say probably going to have to wait until later in 2023 to get more of Fable. But it looks visually very impressive. And of course, these are probably the cutscenes in between gameplay that kind of move the story along. But still, you see playground games at work. You see them taking that visual impressive element of Forza and they bring it over into Fable. This could be one of the showcases for the Xbox Series X and S once it eventually comes out in 2024. So looking good so far. Excited to see more about it. Like I said, I'm not the old school Fable fan that grew up with the franchise, but I understand the significance of it and also the significance of what it could be. They need to rebirth this. They need to bring it back and give it a new life because this is an IP with plenty of opportunity. They just got to take it and run with it and make it something really special once again. Turn 10 showed off the latest look at Forza Motorsport, announcing pre-orders and a launch date of October the 10th on Xbox Series X, S, and PC. Also shared were more details on Forza Motorsport's cover cars with General Motors, the stunning 2023 number one Cadillac racing V-Series R race car, and 2024 Chevrolet Corvette E-Ray, which will be available for fans to drive in Forza Motorsport. And of course, Forza Motorsport is kind of the other side of the Forza world. You've got Horizon, where you jump a doom buggy over a volcano, and then you've got Forza Motorsport that's more grounded and realistic. You can fine-tune your cars, that kind of thing, and get deeper into the overall racing experience and hit the track itself. Um, I'm more of a fan of Horizon. Of course, I'll dive into Forza Motorsport because it looks visually insane. I mean, looking at this game, wow, like Turn 10's really pulling out all the stops on this one, uh, and I'm excited to see how good it looks on a 4K TV at 60 frames a second. This game is going to be really a showcase of what the Xbox can do in 2023 already, not even talking about the games like Fable, like we discussed, that are coming in 2024. But it's a racing game. If you're into that, you are absolutely going to love this one, and it launches on October the 10th for Xbox and PC, day one via Xbox Game Pass as well. Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024, the next generation of the legendary franchise, is on the way. This is a brand new simulator designed to take advantage of the latest technologies in simulation, cloud, machine learning, graphics, and gaming to create the most sophisticated, immersive, and awe-inspiring flight simulator of all time. To achieve this unprecedented level of accuracy, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 is powered by the significantly evolved Asobo Studio engine. This is cool because it fleshes out the flight simulator experience. I'm not a flight sim guy. I played it a bit through the cloud because the game is so huge to install on the Xbox Series X. But this brings in careers that you can participate in. You've got search and rescue, as you can see. You've got Coast Guard. Uh, you've got, uh, you know, you can crop dust where you drop stuff along a field. Uh, there are so many things. There's one thing I know. It's crop dusting. There are so many things you can do in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 that make it a more engaging experience as compared to Microsoft Flight Simulator that came out in 2020, I think, uh, that was pretty much just your basic get into a plane and fly around. You know, it was cool for the novelty of being able to fly around New York City and see these landmarks, point out your house, uh, things like that. 
around the world. You can go to the Bahamas. You can go to uh, the Swiss Alps. You can go wherever you want in Microsoft Flight Simulator. With 2024, it looks like it's, again, adding more purpose to it, adding additional content. Uh, and so this is something they say is entirely new. Seems like it's a fresh new game. And of course, this is, again, a day one Game Pass drop for console and PC as well. And it's also coming to the cloud. Neat stuff to see there. Senua Saga Hellblade 2. This is one that made me feel like it was worth it 100% to go watch something in the theater because hearing the audio design for Hellblade 2 in a movie theater where you hear the voices popping in the speakers on either side uh, was something that was really, really neat. But this is a very, very good looking game. Everything has led Senua to this moment. Sink deep into the next chapter of Senua's story with a showcase of cinematic immersion, beautifully realized visuals, and encapsulating sound from the team at Ninja Theory. An intimate journey of overcoming the darkness, both within and without, awaits in Senua's saga Hellblade 2, coming in 2024. Very disappointed this one isn't coming in 2023. I thought this was going to be a shoe-in for a late fall, early winter release. Just felt like this was the time. Uh, but I think they want to get everything out of the way of Starfield. I think they know that one is going to absolutely dominate. Uh, and so Hellblade 2, visually stunning. Again, this is gameplay we are watching on an Xbox Series X. You're watching something that is running on an Xbox right now. This looks crazy. The transition from the, you know, moving through this crevice to standing up and walking through these caverns, moving the camera around, looking at things. This is next generation. Looks gorgeous. Cannot wait to get into this one when it launches. And it's going to be building on what the original Hellblade brought when it launched a few years ago. And if you haven't played Hellblade, it's on Game Pass, if I remember correctly. One you should absolutely check out. I think that I played it on the Xbox One X, if I remember correctly, uh, but it is wonderful. Such a good story, such good gameplay, and also just a narrative that guides you along, something that's really, really interesting. And then I want to see combat. I want to see what the gameplay is like, because this is really more of a tone setter. Uh, and that's what I want to see more of is what am I actually doing? Because in Hellblade, you kind of just kind of walked from point to point. You would have some gameplay moments here and there. It's mainly a lot of traversal, some combat. Uh, but Hellblade 2 has a lot of potential. I just need to know what it is actually bringing. I'll say it again, though. This has the potential to be Xbox's God of War. Not in terms of action, but in terms of showing that they've got the chops to tell a deep, meaningful story. And I know that Xbox can do it. They have done it in the past, but this could really elevate them to the next level. And so I think the team at Ninja Theory has it in them, and we will all dive in in 2024. Or at least I will. I don't know. You'll have to let me know if you will in the comment section down below. Then we got Compulsion Games South of Midnight. From the creators of Contrast and We Happy Few, South of Midnight is a spellbinding third-person action-adventure game set in the American Deep South, coming to Xbox Series X, S, Windows PC, and Steam. As Hazel, you will explore the mythos and encounter creatures of Southern folklore in a fantastical world. When disaster strikes her hometown, Hazel is called to become a weaver, a magical mender of broken bonds and spirits. Imbued with these new abilities, Hazel will confront and subdue dangerous creatures, untangle the webs of her own family's shared past, and if she's lucky, find her way to a place that feels like home. They have a full exclusive interview with Compulsion Games up over on the Xbox Wire. But I'm excited to learn more about what Compulsion is working on first, because after We Happy Few, they kind of disappeared. Of course, We Happy Few did not pop. Contrast is also up, I think, on Game Pass. I know it's been a Games with Gold game for a while. Uh, but this is the kind of thing that I want to see more of at an Xbox game showcase, because it's not a Gears. It's not a Forza. It's not a Halo. It's not an Avowed. This is in that double A space that creates some of those unique artistic games that make this industry so cool that bring out the creativity of the developers that are working to make them happen. And for me, Compulsion Games still has a lot to prove. Uh, they have not had bangers in the past, in my opinion. Uh, I think that I know we mentioned We Happy Few. It just did not land well, even though visually it was something that was very interesting. Uh, that 
needs to be changed for South of Midnight. I want to see some really interesting gameplay. I want to learn more about how we are kind of hunting down these big mysterious creatures. Of course, this is a big tone setter. And so you see a little bit of Ghostwire Tokyo mixed in there. You see uh, the call out of a third person action adventure game. That's the kind of stuff I like. Uh, so we'll get South of Midnight when we get it. No release date right now. This is probably 2025, 2026, but it is coming day one on Xbox Game Pass. Cool stuff. Starfield Direct reveals new info and gameplay. Starfield is going to be in the running for the game of the year. Can we take a moment to talk about that? Because going into the Starfield Direct, my hype for the game wasn't really there. I'll be honest with you. I think going into Starfield, I wasn't sure what to expect. You see Bethesda Game Studios, you think about Fallout, you think about Elder Scrolls, you think about these huge open world RPGs, and you kind of know what experience you're going to get. And I think that's still true for what we saw with Starfield. This is still going to be a Bethesda Game Studios game, but the limitless potential I think is going to really be something that makes this game one that lasts for an incredibly long time. And I know other podcasts have talked about this needing to be the game of the generation or being kind of pitched as the game of the generation. It could be. This could be another Skyrim moment. And I hate going ahead of a game's release and saying that it's going to be something because ultimately players decide if they want to stick with a game long term. They decide what games are going to become these kind of legends in the gaming community like a Skyrim is. With Starfield though, the pieces are there. You see very deep ship building. You see very deep character creation. You see much, much, much improved combat. That is what blew me away. The gunplay in Starfield looks like it is miles better than what we saw with Fallout uh, or with any of their games that have had guns in them before. This is something that looks like it takes that and makes it something that's much more fluid, much more fun to play because I hate playing Fallout. The gunplay just does not feel good on a console. And so... The Starfield Direct not only gave us a deep look at what the game is going to look like, what we're going to be doing, but it showed the limitless potential of what you can do. You can become a pirate. You can explore the depths of each individual planet, thousand uh, planets, tons of things you can choose to do in the game, but you don't have to do in the game. You can just follow the story, get it over and done with, but that's not what the point of Starfield really is. And I know that I was listening to the Kind of Funny X cast yesterday. Uh, this could be what No Man's Sky promised it would be, where you are able to go to any planet that you see and explore something, but with Starfield, it has intentionality behind it. These are planets that have been designed by hand to bring something that is unique. And they talk about uh, religions that are in the game. They talk about the societies that have cropped up. Uh, these individual hubs that bring things like the Pleasure City of Neon. Uh, all of those experiences are incredibly unique. We don't see this kind of depth in gaming very often. They say that they have worked with NASA to create realistic planets based on their distance from the nearest star. What is that landscape going to look like? If there was life on this planet near the sun, how would that present itself? Things like that that are actually using legitimate data to create it. That level of depth is unprecedented. And so Starfield, I think, has the potential to really be a game of the year contender. This, for me, drove hype through the roof. Now, I do have to talk about it, and we know we had to talk about it. The game is going to be locked at 30 frames per second on Xbox Series X and S. Now, they say it's going to be running at 4K 30. It is going to be running at 1440p 30 on the Series X and S, respectively. And so, Xbox Chief Phil Spencer on Starfield being 30 FPS, as reported on by Tom Warren, who was talking about Giant Bomb at Night, he said it's a creative choice. We obviously have games that are running at 4K 60 on the platform. It's not a platform issue. It's a creative decision. And Todd Howard said the same thing. He gave an interview to IGN who talked more about why they chose to make it 4K 30 and ultimately they wanted the fidelity. They had a vision for the world they wanted to create or the world they wanted to create. 
and they chose to instead of having a lower resolution rock texture or fewer trees populating these worlds or fewer clouds in the sky whatever it might be rather than having to cut elements around that they chose to just cut some of the frames and make it something that looked very very good on console that runs incredibly smoothly on console uh, Todd Howard also talked about needing that headroom because if you have a lot of action going on on the screen they don't want those frames to dip and so hopefully fingers crossed this is going to be a rock solid 30 frames per second on console and I'm somebody who believes that frame rate should be a choice you know you look at what happened with a Plague Tale Requiem last year it launched at 4k 30 and people were upset about it I dove into a Plague Tale and totally forgot about the frame rate it is irrelevant to me that story that gameplay the action in it is phenomenal no matter what and how you're playing it or no matter what you're playing it on and how you're playing it uh, it is just a good game Star Wars Jedi Survivor. When the game launched, the performance mode wasn't running that well, so I chose to play in Fidelity to get a smoother experience across the board and not have frame drops. I never changed it back. 4K30 is fine by me. And so I think this vocal minority you're seeing on social media, these people that are talking about it on Twitter, real life isn't Twitter. I think the majority of players that aren't tuned in, that are just there booting up their Xbox, playing these games, they don't care. They just want a cool experience. And that's the kind of energy I'm trying to bring. Not to say that it should not be an option for games that do want it to be an option. But if Todd Howard and the team believe that 4K30 should be the experience that they deliver on Xbox and that's the best version of the game they want to put out, then we're along for the ride. There's no sense in going on Twitter and ranting about it. Wait until the game comes out. Let it prove itself. And if it's not good, talk about it. Let people know. Make your voices heard. That's all totally cool. But much like what Phil Spencer said, the game speaks for itself. He says that he's been playing it since November, and it is a smooth game. It feels good. It plays well. That's all that matters to me. Now, of course, if you play on PC, you're going to be able to get much better frame rates, higher resolutions, all of that stuff. Uh, but for the console experience, I think that going game by game and the fact that Phil Spencer says it's not a console issue, it is something that Todd Howard chose to do and the team at Bethesda chose to do, uh, I'm fine by that. I'm along for the ride. And so after seeing the Starfield Direct, I'm cool with what they're showing off. I am in 100% on day one because the gameplay looks fun. The possibilities are endless. I don't care what the frame rates are. I just want in. Give me it now as soon as possible. And so I think 30 FPS, 60 FPS, whatever out the window, this has the potential to be a game of the year contender without a doubt. Excited about some Starfield. Then we saw Towerborn, the next adventure from the creators of the Banner Saga. Interesting game there. They say it's the newest game from Stoic, creators of the award-winning Banner Saga series. Packed with fun combat, customization options, and lore to be uncovered, Towerborn has something for everyone. You'll find yourself in the ruins of the City of Numbers with a lone tower keeping survivors safe from a looming evil. You play as an ace, a hero designed to bring hope to humanity in a time of darkness. Multiplayer supports up to four players at a time, so join your friends and set off on your journey or run it solo. World premieres and new games from our partners. Of course, this is the third party element of today's show. We had 33 Immortals. It's a co-op action game for 33 players at once. And this is one that shocked me because it actually got a chuckle from the crowd in the theater. 33 player co-op. What are you even doing here? And so they describe it as a pick up and raid matchmaking game. Cooperate with your allies to survive against hordes of monsters and massive challenging bosses. Expand your arsenal and equip powerful new relics to permanently upgrade your soul. Face the wrath of God in a fight for your eternal life. I was shocked by this one, and it's not one that I think I'm going to be head over heels for right out of the gate, but it's one I'm going to dive into, and I could easily see myself getting deeply into this, because pick up and play rating is something that's appealing to me as somebody who doesn't typically play with a group of people. I'll pick it up from time to time, dive into a Discord, and play a couple of rounds with some people, but nine times out of ten, I'm running stuff solo. And so 33 Immortals being a pickup and raid system where you just matchmake with people and you start taking on these huge hordes of enemies, I'm cool with that. And if it's just a round-based kind of thing that plays a little bit like Hades, where it is top-down hack and slash, uh, kind of has a bullet hell element also to it as well, uh, 
I want to see more of this. I want to get my hands on it. And it being on Game Pass on day one is going to grow that community in a huge way. And I think that's going to be a big benefit to be able to get players in the door to get those servers populated. So you can match make with 33 immortals. You can dive in with the full squad to be able to really get the full experience right out of the gate. Cool to see the Banner Saga team branching out uh, and doing something that's a little bit out of their purview. They are returning to their roots, as they say. Uh, And so a co-op action roguelike for 33 players is on the way. City Skylines 2 launches October the 24th. We know what that is. A beautiful looking sim creator where you build your own city. Plenty of depth in that one if you do want to dive in. Dungeons of Hinterburg is a fantastical alpine adventure. Armed with a sword and a tourist guide, explore the beautiful alpine village of Hinterburg and uncover the magic hidden within its dungeons. Master magic, solve puzzles, and slay monsters. All this and more await you in Hinterburg. Prepare to go on a vacation to a modern-day village in the Austrian Alps, but instead of hiking or skiing, you'll be slaying monsters, hunting for loot, and solving puzzles. 25 magical dungeons have recently appeared around Hinterburg, and monster slaying has become a major tourist attraction, drawing adventurers from all over the world to the small village. When you see this one, the art style visually pops out. Of course, it's got that cell shaded kind of look. And I love a good dungeon. I think this is something that I'll be diving into probably for a weekend. You know, it's not going to be a super in-depth experience, but playing through some of those dungeons is always going to be a good time. Love a good puzzle. And I think the question is, how good is the combat? How deep is the story? How uh, much are you really going to be wanting to dive in? Because you see a lot of different elements here. You see the third person action kind of thing. Saw a little bit of a top down isometric kind of look to it. So maybe dungeons have unique uh, different aspects that maybe make them stand out from one another from a gameplay point of view. Uh, Lots of possibilities there coming in 2024 and it's going to be on Game Pass on day one. Jassant is a unique climbing-based action puzzle game. This is going to be launching in 2023 in the fall for the Xbox Series X and S. And if you love Spelunking, not Spelunky, Spelunking, uh, this game is going to be for you. From Don't Nod, the makers of Life is Strange, Vampire, and Tell Me Why, Jassant is a new action puzzle game based on climbing. A narrative game told with outspoken dialogue, this meditative journey will see you scaling an immeasurably tall tower covered with different biomes to explore, accompanied by the ballast, a mysterious companion made entirely of water. I like this kind of thing. I think that it is a very Don't Nod game. You know, it's not going to be something that is for everyone, but uh, much like the game that I mentioned earlier from Compulsion, This is the kind of stuff I like seeing in Game Pass, because would I buy this on day one? This would be a wait for a sale for me, because I know it's always going to be a good little indie game, so I don't feel compelled to get it as soon as it drops. That's just speaking to my personal interest and my personal taste, because there's always so much to play. With this coming to day one Game Pass... Sure, I'll check it out immediately because the art style is something that appeals to me. I like the cute little water dude on your shoulder. Uh, Everything about this is something that is interesting for a Game Pass drop. Uh, And so I'll be checking it out. Don't Nod uh, has been doing a lot of different stuff recently. We'll see how good it ends up being. The thing that concerns me is looking at the climbing gameplay might not be as precise as it needs to be because you want the feel uh, less of Gollum and more of the precision of Uncharted because Gollum leaping from rock to rock, just kind of, you know, throwing himself around. I like the precision. I like to feel like there's a little bit of a grounded nature to it. And so you see all the different traversal here, different things you've got to do to make your way across this world. Uh, But cool look of the game, interesting gameplay. Looking forward to diving in on day one when it launches on Game Pass later this year. Then we get the two games that I have no personal interest in, so I'm just going to touch on them because they're both significant, and I know plenty of people out there are excited about these. So Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth launches in early 2024 with Ichiban and Kiryu from the Yakuza franchise. Of course, we know this is going to be a big Yakuza game, Uh, but Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth launching next year, and Metaphor Refantasio marking the first fantasy RPG from the team behind Persona. This is in development by Studio Zero. And this is significant because, again, a big fantasy RPG from the team behind Persona. Do y'all know how big Persona is? That is a massive deal. And we'll talk more about Persona here in a minute. But Kunitsu Gami Path of the Goddess is a new tale of the Kami that awaits you. 
Fend off foul creatures and lead the Spirit Stone Maiden on her path. Kunitsugami Path of the Goddess is a brand new title which upholds Capcom's legacy of original and innovative works. This labor of love follows the tradition of unique, a truly unique title such as Okami and Shinsekai Into the Depths. Explore an incredible world in which traditional Japanese aesthetics are brought to stunning life by the power of RE Engine. Enjoy a unique gameplay experience blending action and strategy. Witness an epic clash between the spirit realm and mortal men. This one caught my eye during the show because it's got such a unique style to it, but I want to learn more about what I'm actually going to be doing in the game. Of course, they say a unique gameplay experience blending action and strategy. It, it's hard to really dial in what that means. Like you get deeper into the trailer and you see some action elements here that you first make this. It seems like it's going to be like a traditional action game, like maybe a Wolong kind of situation. But then you get deeper into it and there are some strategy elements that are kind of sprinkled throughout. Visually insane. Visually stunning. RE Engine is wild. I just don't know what to make of it quite yet, so I'm excited to see more of it. No release date or time frame right now, but this is going to be a Game Pass game on day one, and I love the fact uh, that this is going to be coming to Game Pass because this is much like Wo Long Fallen Dynasty was for me, not a game that I would dive into on day one, just because typically I'm not somebody who's into this kind of thing. This experimental thing for me, at least, uh, would not be something I would be picking up from my local GameStop or my digital storefront. But the fact that it's on Game Pass, once again, going to dive and check it out it could be my new favorite you never really know so path of the gun is coming day one to game pass and launching on xbox series xs windows pc and of course available via cloud payday 3 gets a first ever gameplay trailer this game for me looks horrendous um i don't know what's going on but i looked over on the xbox YouTube channel just to check out the trailer, see what the reaction was like. And the little cinematics and things they show at the beginning are fine. The actual gameplay we get as we get deeper into the trailer here, it's looking like a tech demo, if I'm being honest. I mean, just very low uh, resolution textures, just feels like the characters in the game don't really have that same sense of realism. I mean, maybe I'm not the core target demo for Payday 2, but... This looks like what I would have expected from Battlefield Hardline when it launched the, towards the beginning of the Xbox One generation. I just don't know if Payday 3 is going to be visually standing up to what we needed to be. Now, gameplay-wise, like gunplay, looks like it's going to be bringing some of that Rainbow Six Siege kind of action. Same thing we got from Payday 2. Uh, I'm excited to see more of what those elements look like. But I think the game needs some work uh, from a visual POV. Like, it looks okay, just not really what I would have thought after all these years. Uh, but this is going to be another game one or another day one game pass drop. And I think that's going to be a big benefit for this game to get players in the door. Uh, and it's going to be a good squad game, a good one to get with friends on where you can get four people to have Game Pass uh, together to go do a raid at night or go do a little robbery, you know, uh, in the game. Not not really. Not like not like in, in real life. Uh, so we'll see how this one fares. Launching pretty soon, coming later in 2023, if you do want to dive in. A good fall release right there. Persona 3 Reload is the rebirth of the RPG classic. This is coming day one to Game Pass and PC Game Pass. Leaked a couple of days early, uh, but that's coming later on this year. And Persona 5 Tactica is a thrilling new spinoff coming day one into Game Pass. After a strange incident, the... Uh, the Phantom Thieves wander into a bizarre realm where its citizens are living under tyrannical oppression. Surrounded by a military group named Legionnaires, they find themselves in grave danger until a mysterious revolutionary named Arena rescues them and offers an enticing deal in exchange for their help. What truth lies behind Arena and the deal she offers to the Phantom Thieves? Overthrow your enemies and fight corruption with powerful personas, an assortment of weapons, and wipe them out with style in a fresh new tactical RPG from the award-winning Persona 5 game. Much like the other games I mentioned earlier, don't care. Just know the significance of it. So y'all have fun. That's where I'll leave that one. Star Wars Outlaws. Let's go, baby. The first open world Star Wars game. Is it, though? I don't know about that one. Uh, coming to Xbox Series XS and Windows PC. Experience the first ever open world Star Wars game, Star Wars Outlaws, set between the events of Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back and Star Wars Return of the Jedi. Explore new and iconic locations across the galaxy and risk it all as Kay Vess, an emerging scoundrel seeking freedom and the means to start a new life, along with her companion, Nyx. Fight, steal, and outwit crime syndicates as you join the galaxy's most wanted. If you're willing to take the risk, the galaxy is full of opportunity. 
did not expect to see this one at this showcase. This is where it needed to be, though. Because the Ubisoft Forward that's happening later today as I record this is going to show more of this gameplay, but to have the debut there may not have given it the eyes that it really deserves. And so this being at the Xbox Showcase, number one, shows a strong partnership between Ubisoft and Xbox, but on top of that, also shows that they are wanting to get eyeballs on this game. They want it to have as big of a stage as it possibly can. And I would say that the Xbox Game Showcase for this year was arguably even a bigger deal than maybe even Summer Game Fest proper because you have the Xbox brand. Anybody who knows gaming knows that Xbox is going to have some stuff to show. Summer Game Fest still isn't known to the casual fans as well as it is Xbox. And so having this at that showcase gives it the audience that it needs. But on top of that, it looks good. It's a good looking game. And of course, this is a cinematic trailer. We'll see what the gameplay itself looks like. And we are going to be getting gameplay later on today that has been confirmed. Uh, this is going to be at Ubisoft Forward. We're seeing a big comeback for Ubi. And I am very much so here for it. Uh, because Assassin's Creed Mirage looks awesome. Uh, I think they should ditch Beyond Good and Evil 2 entirely. Get Skull and Bones out the door. Just write that one off as a loss. But stuff like this, this is what I want to see more of. X Defiant. I want to see more of that game. That was a fun first-person shooter for that beta period a couple of months back. Uh, lots of stuff to look forward to here, but Star Wars Outlaws looks absolutely killer. One of my favorites from the show overall. The Chinese Room plunges into narrative horror with Still Wakes the Deep. This is coming day one to Game Pass and PC Game Pass. Still Wakes the Deep is a return to the first-person narrative horror genre from the creators of the critically acclaimed Dear Esther, Everybody's Gone to Rapture, and Amnesia, A Machine for Pigs. A Glaswegian oil rig worker must find his life through a visceral what? Must fight for his life, excuse me, through a visceral storm, claustrophobic surroundings, thick, dark, and perilous North Sea waters. All communications are cut off, all exits are gone. The only way to defeat the horror board is to face it. Looks like amnesia, looks like a horror game you would expect from the teams behind the games that they listed there, and visually impressive game. I'm happy to see this one coming to Game Pass because once again, this is going to be one that I am all over. Uh, it looks really pretty, and I think that having the visual fidelity that this game has is important to drive that horror home because the more realistic something can look, the more jarring and unsettling it can be. And I think that's one of the reasons why I didn't really feel that concerned when I'm playing through old school Resident Evil 2 back in the day uh, or even stuff like Resident Evil 4 or 5 on the PlayStation 2 and Xbox 360. Uh, when you're playing those games, you don't really feel compelled to... Mm, you don't really feel scared because the games don't look as good as they possibly could. Then we get to things like Resident Evil 7, Resident Evil 2 Remake, 3 Remake, Resident Evil 8. There's a horror element there where those jump scares happen a little bit more than they would back in the day. And I think that is what the Chinese room is trying to do here with Still Wakes the Deep. Uh, I want to see more of that one. But no release date that I am aware of right now. Scroll to the end of the trailer, arriving early 2024. So a little bit to wait on that one, but should be a good one to dive into. Then we got a surprise hardware announcement. Back in black, the new Xbox Series S has one terabyte of storage. So this is 350 bucks, and it is a brand new Xbox Series S, same hardware inside, same look, except the fact that it is black instead of white. Now, the big benefit is that it has one terabyte of storage, and that's a big deal for a digital console. 512 gigs is not enough for an Xbox Series S to really be your main gaming machine unless you're willing to switch those games out regularly. You know, I look at my Series S that I've got on the shelf behind me as a Game Pass machine, where if a game drops on day one, I can install it. Diablo 4 installed, I think it's like 40 gigs or something like that, uh, and that's no problem. But when you're talking about multiple games you're installing, Master Chief Collection, Halo Infinite, Forza Motorsport, Forza Horizon 5, you're done. That's your whole hard drive right there. You don't have room for anything else on that thing. Uh, and so with the one terabyte, that gives it the same storage as the Xbox Series X. I think that's a big benefit. And for 350 so even if you don't want the highest fidelity, if you don't want the highest resolutions, frame rates, that kind of thing, 
you can pick up an Xbox Series S and get that same storage. And of course, it looks very sleek and black, very good looking device here. And so going into a game like Starfield, where this is going to be a potential game of the generation, the Xbox Series S having one terabyte of storage for 350, this is going to be a big seller this holiday season. And it's launching on September the 1st for 350 bucks. I think this is going to be a big winner here. And so the Xbox Series S is still one of the best consoles of the generation. There's a lot of talk about it potentially holding back some games, but ultimately I think that this is going to be a net benefit for players because you can get an affordable next generation machine that can play Starfield. They can play whatever this year's Call of Duty is going to be if it's not cross-gen. Uh, you can play next-gen games on hardware that isn't breaking the bank. You know, once again, for the Xbox Series S right now, $299, you can get access to the games that everybody's playing. If you don't mind, maybe potentially lower frame rates. If you don't mind, potentially a lower resolution. If you just want to play the games like so many people do, this is the best way to do it. So to see it getting a black model and one terabyte of storage is an awesome upgrade. And I am excited to see that one later this year. Also, the Starfield headset and wireless controller are real. You can pick up the limited edition controller for $79 or the wireless headset for $124.99. It is available now and shipping starts this week. These things are out in the wild as we speak. Uh, for me, not going to pick one up because I have too many controllers as is. I've got two white ones, a regular black one that I think has a broken thumb thumbstick. I don't use that. It's just on the shelf behind me as like a model. Uh, I have the Lunar Shift model. I have the 20th anniversary Xbox controller. Uh, so I have plenty. Don't need any more. Might buy one later. We'll see what happens. Uh, but glad to see these are real. I am shocked because when these things leaked a couple of months back, I did not expect them to actually be legitimate. But the translucent triggers on the back are really what are almost selling me on this controller. Very cool stuff there. And the Constellation theme from Starfield just looks really, really good. So if you want to check that out, available now on Xbox.com and in retailers around the world. Then we have new updates for live service games. You can pre-order Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty. Uh, we got a look at uh, old John Wick himself, Keanu Reeves, who took the stage to talk more about what Phantom Liberty is bringing. He is back with Idris Elba for this huge expansion. Uh, and people talk about how this is much deeper than it appears to be. This is not just some new content, some new story. Uh, this is something that has entirely new skill trees, tons of depth to it. Uh, this is a true legitimate expansion. And so I think this is going to run 35 bucks if I remember correctly. Uh, you can pre-order now and it launches on September the 26th. Of course, also come into the PlayStation side of things, Xbox, PC, all of that good stuff. Very excited to dive in here. I still have to go back and finish my Cyberpunk run. It's just such a big game and there are so many things to play. Uh, that might be my summer 2023 game though because, hey, why not? After I finish Diablo 4, maybe I'll dive back into some Cyberpunk 2077. The Elder Scrolls Online Necrom is launching in a couple of days. You can prepare for a new Elder Scrolls adventure. Of course, ESO is still going strong. Fallout 76 Road to Atlantic City is also available. You can check it out on Series X, S, Xbox One, PC, Steam, and Cloud for members of the Xbox Game Pass Ultimate community. And then you can become a Dune Ornith Ornithopter pilot? Ornithopter, I think is how you say that? in Microsoft's Flight Simulator free expansion coming on November the 3rd. Uh, cool little Dune pop there. I know in the theater everybody was like, oh, Dune. You know, it's kind of, kind of cool to see. Uh, but that's uh, a cool little expansion for the Microsoft Flight Simulator community there. Overwatch 2 Invasion is coming later this fall, and you can get something with Game Pass Ultimate, specifically the new Heroes Starter Pack. All six new heroes, legendary skins, and in-game cosmetics are bundled in with that membership. Cool additional benefit there if you want to dive into the new Overwatch content, which they say is the largest Overwatch 2 content drop yet. Sea of Thieves is getting a Legend of Monkey Island crossover, and that wrapped up the show. Those are all of the biggest announcements. But in total, looking back on the Xbox showcase and the Starfield Direct, this is a 5 out of 5 showcase. Without a doubt, 100%. These are the announcements that I want to see from Xbox. You have the big AAA games, a deep dive into Starfield, and you also see the AA and the indie games that are finally seeing the light of day. And while we didn't get updates on Gears or Halo or Perfect Dark or Indiana Jones or Contraband or anything like that, we got a look at great games coming to Xbox that prove the value of what the Xbox Series X and S bring. That's exciting for me. And the best part is all those games I just listed, 
Those are still coming. We're still getting Halo Infinite content. We are still getting a new Gears eventually. We are still going to be seeing Perfect Dark. We're still going to check out what Contraband is. Indiana Jones is on the way. There are so many good games that are in the pipeline that if this is what 2023 and largely 2024 has in store, 2025 and 2026 and beyond are going to be absolutely insane. Elder Scrolls 6 is on the way. I mean, that's probably going to be like 2026 at the earliest, but still Elder Scrolls 6 is on the way. It's an exciting time to be a part of the Xbox community. And I think that right now with this showcase, Phil Spencer, Sarah Bond, Matt Booty, the team, they proved that there is a great reason to have an Xbox in 2023, in 2024 and beyond. There are so many good games on the way that we just have to be excited about. And if you don't have an Xbox, there are plenty of things here, if only the benefit of Game Pass, with so many of them coming to the service, to make you want to get in on the action. And that's exactly what the showcase needed to do. But that wraps up today's episode of the Jam Pack Report. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to drop me a like down below. And of course, let me know what you thought about the Xbox Game Showcase. What titles caught your eye? Are you diving into Starfield on day one? I'd love to know your key takeaways and what you would rate the show in the comment section down below. But I'll catch you on the next episode, which should be soon because we still have plenty of showcases to get into. But until then, enjoy some games and as always, keep on playing.